to the Getting Started series. And we are going to be kicking off this series by getting started with a heat press. So earlier uh, or throughout the duration of the day, we have been talking about a variety of things um, that you can do to really set your business up for success, whether that be heat printing t-shirts, fleece, hoodies, um, getting out of the apparel box um, with drinkware or printing accessories with bags. Uh, there are just so many things available to you that can really warrant um, you know, an increase in the bottom line of your business. So now we really want to take a deep dive into other things that can really build a success in your business. So we are going to start with the most important piece of any t-shirt shop, and that is the heat print technology, right? So we're going to be talking all about getting started with a heat press. If you already have a heat press, what to look for, um, making sure that you have the um, right technology available to you, and we're going to be covering that. So heat printing is the fastest growing customization technique in the industry, whether um, people are using other print methods such as screen printing or um, even embroidery, DTG, sublimation. Uh, heat printing does play a very powerful role even for those folks that are using other print technologies. So you can see some stats listed there um, that you know a lot of people are incorporating a heat press into their business. If not, it just encompassing the, their business as a whole. Um, I will say that heat presses are, you know, that go-to technology because of that low uh, cost of entry um, when investing in getting started with printing custom t-shirts. A heat press is really the easiest way and the most <clears throat> uh, cost um, or price conscious uh, option out there for really getting started. So um, as we get started and we continue to grow with heat presses, what we really need to consider is how we utilize our heat press and build the most success with it. Um, so the power of heat printing is the versatility, the simplicity, and the profitability that you have available to you with just a single piece of equipment. So today we're going to be really, or in this session, we're going to be really diving deep in the versatility of all the different heat presses that are out there, the different items that, that you can heat apply, the different finishes that you can heat apply, which you guys have seen throughout the day. So you guys are already understanding the versatility that just a single piece of equipment that is a heat press, what all it is capable of doing and what you can achieve. All right, it's very simple as well. Um, there's not a large learning curve when it comes to familiarizing yourself with this piece of equipment. Once you understand that every heat transfer out there um, has a recipe of time, temperature, and pressure, then essentially you understand uh, how a heat press is going to work. You want to make sure that it has a time and temperature readout and adjustable pressure. Um, so that you can ensure that those heat transfers are applying accurately. So whenever you compare this print method to the variety of other methods that are out there, this is very simplistic and it gets the job done quickly. Uh, also, you can warrant a high profit opportunity um, with the low cost of wholesale blanks, t-shirts, hoodies, bags, anything like that, and then being able to um, order um, really great price um, transfers or even producing transfers in house to cut costs that way, you can warrant a high profit opportunity. So that's one thing that we really talked a lot about in the playbook series is how you can warrant a high profit opportunity for a variety of items that you can customize for consumers. Right. So the keys to successful heat printing, how can you ensure that with your heat press, you are going to be confident in knowing that whenever you are printing apparel or accessories with this piece of equipment, that it is going to last, right? And it all boils down to three things, and that is time, temperature, and pressure, right? So that's one thing that Hotronics does very well. 
they engineer these heat presses to build confidence in you, knowing that anytime you load an item on that heat press, you're gonna know what, how much time it's on there for, what temperature it's going to be at, ensuring that the temperature is accurate and that you can adjust your pressure based off of what the adhesive of that transfer requires to cure accurately to your apparel, All right? So those are the three key things. So if you are currently in a stage, uh, maybe you're in a research stage where you want to get started with heat printing and you're not sure what type of investment you should make in a heat press, I will say make the investment. It is worth it in a heat press that is going to give you time, temperature, and pressure read out so that you can ensure that you are getting an accurate application every time. Now, there are a variety of heat press styles out there, and it really will boil down to, um, you know, what is going to best suit you for where you currently are at, whether you're just getting started, whether you're looking to grow your business, or maybe you just need to streamline your heat printing process more. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into those different styles now. The first and most common style is a clam style. The one that is being photographed there is the auto clam, all right? So clam styles are extremely popular. Uh, we see them all over the place in this style, but one thing that the auto clam features is an, autom an automated open, all right? So that you know, <clears throat> Once you load your item on there and you are getting ready to heat apply, you can lock that down and you can walk away to answer an email, take a phone call. Maybe you're prepping your next t-shirt that's gonna be loaded on that, on that heat press. This is gonna auto open for you, right? This auto open feature um, is extremely essential for uh, that busy BA or someone like me that is multitasking multitasking constantly and needs to jump from one thing to the next. All right, so it has that auto open feature. If you guys are not familiar with um, the auto clam, we have um, a ton of educational articles and videos um, on stalls.com and stalls TV YouTube of seeing this thing in action. If you haven't attended um, any of Kelly's presentations today, um, be sure to jump back and watch her sessions. Uh, she is using the auto clam in those and you can really get a grasp of how this um, auto clam really, really works. And it is a workhorse. It's probably one of my favorite um, heat presses from Hotronics because of that auto open feature. Um, but I just love um, that it's not physically taxing whenever I have to lock that down. It has an auto open feature for me. It gives me a temperature readout, um, a time readout, and also, also a pressure readout, all right? So that's one common thing that we see among um, a variety of heat presses is, yes, there is adjustable pressure, but do you know exactly what pressure you're getting per square inch? So this will read that out to you. Um, you know, you can just lay out your work right under the heating element. Um, and unlike some of the other clam styles out in the market, and I'm just going to say it, you know, the one, the cheap ones that you find on Amazon, for example, um, this will not experience cold spots like those will. You're getting even heat across the entire surface area of that upper heating element so that you can ensure it's even temperature um, across the entire thing. So it doesn't matter where you are putting the location of your design. It could be a center front, it could be a low hip placement, it could be a left chest. Wherever it is, it's getting the accurate heat that it needs. In addition to that, accurate pressure, and then of course your dwell time. And this can all be set up in the menu section of this heat press. Um, you'll notice there that there is a note that this is the most portable style. Um, so this is a 16 by 20 that you're seeing here. There are smaller sizes. There's a 16 by 16, so on and so forth. It goes down the line. We have a variety of sizes in this style listed on our website. So be sure to check them out. 
if you guys are checking out the show specials for these, you'll notice a package for the 16 by 16 and a 16 by 20. Both are extremely portable, which means you can take these on site and be able to set up very easily. The 16 by 16 is an option because it's a little bit lighter weight because it is smaller in dimension. Next, you have the swing and draw style. So this is a completely heat-free layout. Um, easy garment layout. So that's one of the features that I absolutely love about the Fusion. I'm one of those people that gets very hot very easily. So working under the heat can uh, be a lot for me. So I like to just be able to swing the heat away. Um, that's why I work with an A to Z, which we'll be showing here shortly. Um, but having that heat-free layout is extremely uh, nice to be, to be able to overlook and um, really oversee the whole print area without anything being in the way. With the clam style, so we're gonna hop back real quick, you can see that you know we have the clam hovering right above our bottom platen where our t-shirt would be laid out and where our design would be laid out. With the fusion, that print head on the top would completely swing away, or if you um, are limited on space with the fusion, you can actually lock that print head in place and just draw out the bottom platen and work with your layout that way, All right? So this is, um, you know, a, a double feature here. So you're getting the swing option and you're also getting the draw option. So heat-free layout, easy garment layout, uh, definitely gonna require more space than a clamshell, it is bigger. Um, but it does come on the base that you see there. So there aren't any additional attachments you really need for this heat press as far as setup goes. Um, now this is gonna have more advanced technology for you. This is going to be, um, this is the Fusion IQ. So we talk about the IQ a lot because of the technology that it offers. It has presets in there. So all of your uh, heat transfer settings are already set up for you. And with a click of the screen, it'll automatically start adjusting temperature, time, and then um, showing you what pressure you need to be at. All right, so those presets come in handy if you are printing a variety of different heat transfer types from screen print um, to specialty heat transfer vinyl. Um, and then also has that Wi-Fi connectivity so that you can track all the jobs that you are doing with the heat press one of my personal favorites about the Wi-Fi connectivity is that you, you um, if something could go wrong, uh, your technician at Hotronics could easily just access into that. Granted that you give um, uh, access to them to do that um, and they can troubleshoot from there. So no more hanging out on the phone with them, trying to figure it out. They can just connect right in and help troubleshoot that for you. All right, and then you have the swing only style. All right, so this is definitely um, a great starter heat press. And depending on where you are at right now, um, this is something that is a really great price point to really just jump in to start getting um, custom t-shirts done and um, you know, still ensuring durability, All right? So this style does not offer a pressure readout like the Fusion and the Auto Clam do. However, it still does give you adjustable pressure and it's very um, telling in, you know, ensuring that you have accurate pressure um, and knowing if you're at a firm or if you're at a light. So uh, with this, obviously it's similar to the Fusion in that it has that heat-free layout. So it makes it very easy for placing your um, transfers on your accessories or garments. It has that 15 by 15 dimension, um, and then you know it gives you your temperature and time display and pressure adjust adjustment as you've seen. All right, so that is a quick overview of the different heat press styles that you have available to you, all of which are going to be totally worth the investment, but those are the key things that you want to look for in a heat press, depending on what stage you're at, whether it's the level of getting started with the 15 by 15 A to Z, or maybe you are ready to make the jump to the Fusion IQ. Um, you have all of your time, temperature, and pressure readouts, and you also have access to additional accessories that really help set you up for success whenever you're working with these pieces of equipment. 
So the A to Z does offer these features as well. So earlier in the heat press uh, 101 class, we were talking about what accessories really help set you up for success whenever you're working with different transfer types. Uh, interchangeable platens being one of them. So um, that is one of the things that Hotronics machines are really known for other than they're just beautiful machines out in the market um, is the ability to load a unique um, platen on there, whether it be for can koozies, whether it be for neck labels, whether it be for uh, printing the underbill of hats, right? There's a, we have a platen for virtually any item that you could think of. Um, and those interchangeable platens are, uh, for the most part, um, across the board. So obviously the A to Z um, is going to differ. It has specific platens that go with it. Right now it is the six by 10. But as for the auto clam and the fusion, you can um, use a variety of all of those platens. Um, and you'll also notice that we actually package some of those platens in um, those show specials so that you can get started loading on a variety of different items. All right, so um, with that being said, in addition to the interchangeable platens, we're just gonna do a quick overview again of some of those other accessories that really help you uh, get started with a heat press, All right? So we review the interchangeable platens. Next is print perfect pads. So whether you have interchangeable platens or not, um, sometimes there's going to be a unique item that might be a little bit harder to print. So you need a smaller print area and I, being able to isolate that and get it completely flat for even pressure. All right, so relating back to the time, temperature and pressure, pressure is one of those key things that you have to have to ensure a durable application. These print perfect pads really, really help in isolating a print area even further. So if I have my eight by 10 loaded on here, but maybe there's another obstruction in the way that the eight by 10 is not allowing me to get around, I can use a print perfect pad that's actually going to raise that print area and make it completely flat for me so that I can get a nice durable print with my heat transfer. All right, so print perfect pads come in handy. There's also these mouse pads from Transfer Express that they recommend using for their screen print transfers. In addition to that, we have a flexible application pad. So this works as a cover sheet. Um, looking for my cover sheets now, actually, I'm gonna need one. Here it is on the floor, it fell behind the table. Um, all right, so this is a craft paper cover sheet. This is what you've probably seen used a ton throughout the day. Um, but this flexible application pad is going to work as another cover sheet. Um, Mark Schwab was actually utilizing a smaller version of this for heat printing uh, heat sensitive hats in his class. Um, so these can be utilized for heat sensitive items to ensure that you get an accurate um, uh, application, but it's going to protect the item or the garment that's being heat applied from actually getting damaged, burned, scorched, what have you, All right? So really great to have that on hand with your heat press. In addition to that, um, if you're working with some other heat sensitive items and you need something a little bit softer uh, to avoid the edges of the platens, then heat printing pillows really, really help with that. These also help with presses that don't have under any interchangeable platens. So I use um, heat press pillows quite a bit to isolate print areas, get seams out of the way of um, certain garments like leggings and joggers um, to be able to print really close to the seam on the side of the leg. Uh, pillows come in really handy for that. Uh, basically, we have a Teflon-like um, product that is covering a foam pillow that's in here. Um, and you just insert this into whatever garment that you wanna utilize and it's going to, you can put seams right over it and the seams will actually sink down in, but the print area will remain raised, okay? So that foam allows for that seam to kind of sink down in, but still apply enough pressure for the transfer to apply accurately. All right. so. 
a lot of information has just been thrown at you. So I wanna make sure that I am answering any questions that you guys have. So I'm gonna pause for a moment and take any questions. All right, fabulous. So we have a question from two ladies that asked, do you need a cover for the heating element and the platen or just the platen? Uh, preference, all right? So a lot of people that are working with um, DTG, they will get a cover for their upper platen um, so that they don't have to worry about cover sheets, okay? Because they would be going through a lot of cover sheets. Um, so they'll just cover that. Um, I don't always recommend having the upper heating element cover, but if you just want for safety or precaution, whatever you want to call it, have that. Totally understandable. People do it all the time. Now, I will say that this is something essential to have because it prevents the normal wear and tear of your bottom platen. So if I were to not have this cover on here, um, there would I would experience some lifting on the edges of where the silicone pad um, is um, being the, like the adhesive, the adhesive between <laughs> the silicone pad and the uh, steel, right? So that could have some wear and tear there on the edges and the silicone pad will start to lift a little bit. This will keep that from happening, that protects that. Um, and then also this is a non-stick cover here. So if I were to ever have an accident where the adhesive sticks to this, it's going to wipe right off. In addition to that, um, it makes threadability very, very easy. Um, and when I say threadability, I mean, dressing the bottom platen with the garment or accessory that you're heat applying to isolate the print area and just work with one layer of it. Um, and it makes threading that on a lot simpler because it is a smooth surface as opposed to the silicone pad that is rubbery um, where it's going to want to stick and it's going to just make it, you know, kind of a headache to get the garment threaded on there. Thanks, Jenna. And then Mark is asking, what are the AMP requirements for the heat press? Uh, we just recommend having a dedicated 20 amp circuit. So your typical circuit, but just make sure your heat press is the only thing that's actively running on that. Time for one more? Yep. Okay. Um, what do you use to clean the heating plate in the Fusion IQ? I keep getting white ink on it. Um, so I use an oven or not an oven, a stove top cleaner. Um, it's called soft scrub, um, but I will keep the heating element a little hot and grab a rag and put a little bit. If I can't get it off by just doing that, um, then I'll grab the soft scrub um, stove top cleaner and wipe it off. I have had some um, of my own <laughs> upside down transfers just get stuck right up there. So I forgot to use a cover sheet and I've had to find um, a way to get that off. So yeah, that's what I recommend for that. That's it for now. All right, awesome. Thank you, Liz. All right, so let's go ahead and get into heat application. Um, we are going to be reviewing some different things that you can heat apply. So just as a review, we are going to do a goof proof application. Um, and I know you guys have seen goof proof a decent amount throughout the day, but we are going to show it again. And I wanna show you how you can print unique locations. Um, so this is a gang sheet of goof proof that you see here. There's some white ink on there. So it's a little bit hard to see all of it that's on there, um, but we have, one, two, three, four, five, five total designs ganged up on this one sheet. So ideally, yeah, I could probably just print five different items with one gang sheet, but I could also take advantage of all the real estate that's on a t-shirt and build more profit opportunity in one piece. So I'm just paying for one blank as opposed to five blanks. Now I probably won't print all five, but we could probably get three solid prints on one t-shirt by utilizing this gang sheet and then maybe save two other designs for some other 
um, print items, all right? So just kind of thinking outside the box of what you can utilize a gain sheet for, all right? So I'm just using a standard Horton Company t-shirt. Um, it's 100% cotton and this proof works phenomenal on it. So I'm just going to thread this on and we're going to do a standard full front as our first placement. Now, before I do that, you'll notice that I threaded this on and I'm dressing my bottom button. The reason that I do that is to ensure that I am getting an accurate placement by just eyeballing. All right, so I'm dressing it as if the bottom platen is wearing it. The collar is dropping, the corners of the platen are meeting the shoulder seams, and then all I'm doing is just slowly dragging this back and allowing that collar to drop off of the front and just making sure that I'm centered. This could come over just a little bit, all right? So that is how I thread and kind of eye up where I want my first placement to go. Now you can take it the, to the next level and create a seam down the center of your shirt so that you wanna make sure you're exactly center. That's one of those best practice tips that a lot of people will do. They'll fold the t-shirt in half, lay it on there, heat press it so that there is a seam mark and then that way they know center. All right, so we're going to do a quick preheat. We're prepping the garment to Sure, we're at a accurate pressure. I want to make sure I'm at a firm pressure for this. And then I also, during that process, release the moisture and wrinkles in the fabric. And now what I'm going to do is cut up my gang sheet so that I can have a full front placement. We are going to do a unique placement on the back. And then we're going to do a sleeve print too. Take advantage of that extra blank area so that we can warrant a higher price for the overall t-shirt. Right, and even better, we're working with a two color screen print as well. So I am just placing my whole front here. If I want to find center of this design, I did show this in heat press. 101 earlier, but let's just go ahead. And we are putting the start of our design matching the end of our design and finding center that way by folding in the center. But I will say there are some really nice grid marks on the back of this that help you line it up as well. All right, no cover sheet needed with the screen print transfer, so I can go ahead and lock that down for its full application. The application that I'm using for this goof proof um, demo is 325 for 15 seconds. That is one of the three options that you have with the goof proof heat transfers. Now this is a hot peel, so I can go ahead and peel that back once it's complete. The ink completely releases from the backing that it came on. And now our full front placement is complete. And I absolutely love this design. So you guys actually have this design available. If you haven't yet purchased the marketing kit, this design came right from there. So you guys have the ability to make this exact t-shirt yourself. All right, so let's go ahead and thread on the back of the t-shirt. And the unique placement I'm gonna do is actually the back side of the t-shirt next to that seam. So I'm going to thread this down a bit and tuck it under so it's not falling on me. All right, and I'm going to prep that real quick. And I'm going to use this design. Jenna, while you're getting that set up, um, Sharon is asking which marketing kit is the motorcycle design in? Thanks. This is the Transfer Express marketing kit, all right? So the Transfer Express marketing kit has all of your screen print transfers and the Stalls marketing kit has all of your heat transfer vinyl. 
So this is a Plastisol ink goof proof that we are using for this application. So we would source that from the Transfer Express marketing kit. All right, so this is our second design. So just to kind of get your uh, wheels turning a little bit, um, what would you sell the t-shirt with just the full front for being a two color design, right? So in my mind, I would probably sell that for about $18, a two color design, nice black cotton t-shirt. Then since I'm adding an additional print here, I'm going to increase my price. I could probably get an additional $2 because it's a unique placement add some unique brand opportunity and value to the shirt, right? It's not a standard full back. We just have some really cool uh, branding on the back side of the shirt, right? So unique placements, they go a long way. You can uh, really build some, a lot of cool um, print and profit opportunity in utilizing unique placements, All right? And then in addition to that, so we started with, $18, I'm going to sell it for $20 as is. And to increase even more, I want to sell, let's say we're going to sell it for um, $25 overall. I'm going to add an additional two color print to the sleeve. All right, so we just took a t shirt that could be sold standard full front for $18, and now we are making it sellable for $25 and I'm really not increasing my cost to produce other than my labor and overhead because I only paid for that gain sheet, not by design, all right? So definitely utilize all of the designs on your gain sheet. Sorry if you guys can hear that, that was really loud. <laughs> There's a big motor or a motorcycle that just went by. All right, so I am inserting my print perfect pad that is raising my print area and getting that sleeve nice and flat for me on there, no seams getting in the way. And now I'm going to take my additional print and put that on the sleeve. All right, sleeves are pretty easy to line up. You just go with what center. Um, obviously the seam drops all the way down, but for the style that we are printing, the seam stops the shoulder and then it's just blank. Um, so it makes it really easy for printing. All right, and our third application is complete. So now it is sellable at $25 as opposed to just 18. All right, so three print areas utilizing a really cool, unique print area. Um, a lot of unique placements that you can use to build more value in the items that you are pressing. All right, and now I have two more designs of that gang sheet to take advantage of. If I want to print a tote bag, um, a hat, what else, a hoodie anything like that, cinch bag. All right, so that is goof proof. Let's talk about another screen print solution that I absolutely love, and that is Elastic Prints. So Elastic Prints is a low temp solution um, that works great on a polyester. It has a stretch and give to it, and just looks and feels phenomenal on some of those synthetic fabrics. So the t-shirt that we're going to be heat applying is this new era t-shirt. All right. It is, I believe, 100% polyester, but could be a blend or like a high content of poly. Let me double check. All right. Yes, it is 100% polyester. Absolutely love this fabric. Very premium. So whenever you are working with more premium substrates, you definitely want to work with a premium transfer. Right. Elastic Prince definitely offers that finish. All right, and we are gonna wait for our heat press to cool down a bit. While we do that, let's go ahead and take any more questions that are coming in. So the group this evening, they've been pretty quiet. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Keep right. the questions yeah. coming, guys. Yes, if you guys have any questions, let us know. At this point, some of this may be review, so I understand. 
<clears throat> All right, we're staying on time. Okay, so we're at, we haven't really cooled down. And this room is hot. I don't know how long it's going to take. So we're just going to go ahead and heat apply. Um, I will say one of the features about the A to Z is that typically um, it does not take a lot of time to heat up or cool down. I turned the heat press on about 20 minutes before the class started and it was already heated up like 10 minutes in. All right, so we are taking our elastoprance transfer. Elastoprance, uh, you can do multiple colors with, but of course it's going to be just like your standard screen print type order where you wanna keep colors low. If you get into three or more, consider a printable product such as ultra color soft. All right, and I'm going to increase my pressure. And this product is a cold peel. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure that the adhesive has time to cool um, so that it can cure to the shirt so that it is durable through the wash cycle. Once again, um, this transfer is available through the marketing kit. And in that marketing kit, you have all of your application instructions as well. I may have overlooked it at this point. Oh, here they are. Okay, so these are all of the application instructions that come in the marketing kit. Great, so keep this handy so that you guys have that for whenever you're ordering on um, different styles. All right, so I'm going to remove this from the bottom platen and speed up the cool down process by just placing it on something cool and help to release that heat a little bit faster. And then I can go ahead and peel that back. I love that you can get the distress effects with this product as well. And it has really great opacity to it and an overall just really soft feel, All right? Elastoprens, definitely one of my top. Um, and we didn't even get a scorch mark at 320 degrees with it. But just know you can drop this down to 300 Actually, you can drop it down to 290, even better, right? So bring on the synthetic backups. All right, now that pretty much encompasses how, it, how easy it is to work with screen print transfers when you're working with a quality heat press that can ensure accurate temperature, accurate pressure, and accurate time, right? So having those readouts really make these processes easy. Um, now, I have worked with screen print transfers um, for a while. When I first got started, I didn't really understand, um, you know, why it was so important to use the right pressure. But I would always experience failure, and it's because I wasn't following those instructions to a T. So if you do experience failure, failure as you're getting started, it's okay. That's what the marketing kit's for. It allows you to get started with these transfers learn them, understand why time, temperature, and pressure is so important so that you can get an accurate application every time. All right, so let's show you heat transfer vinyl and all that you can achieve with custom heat transfers with vinyl, right? So Premium Plus, that's the first product that we are going to heat apply. And I absolutely love Premium Plus because it has a four-way stretch and it feels amazing. So whenever you are working with more premium style t-shirts, right? So this is an Adidas t-shirt. I sourced this from SNS Activewear. Uh, so you can get it wholesale when you're working with premium brands, premium brands and premium fabrics. You want to make sure that the transfer is going to stay true to that as well. You want to make sure it has a premium finish. Uh, premium plus. It's in the name, right? So it's definitely a good quality product that is going to pair very nicely with some of these higher end brands and premium substrates, right? So as you can see, same process. I am just going through the steps here at this point, loading on the garment, threading it on, isolating that print area, prepping it for application, and then heat applying. All right, so one of my favorite things to do when it comes to Premium Plus is stretch it. 
uh, so that everybody really understands um, just how amazing the Premium Plus is. So I will be sure to do that. Um, I'm folding my cover sheet because there's some ink on it that I didn't want it to transfer. So that's why I did that, just FYI. Here's another one. We'll use this moving forward. All right, so Premium Plus is another one of those low temp products that you can apply at 280 degrees. So whenever you are pressing synthetic fabrics, you'll want to um, definitely use this product because you will not scorch or burn it. So as you can see, no heat press mark on the Adidas shirt. Perfect, we definitely wouldn't want that to happen on a more premium branded tee. All right, so this is a warm peel. Anytime I work with Premium Plus, I do let the adhesive cool just a tad. The reason I do that is because if I were to tear it right away while it was still hot, it is so stretchy that it will distort it. So I do let it cool just a little bit. And then I peel that carrier. All right, and let's show you the stretch. All right, so no cracking or peeling. It moves right with it. And I can stretch it this way too and it's gonna move with the garment, right? So absolutely love Premium Plus, no wrinkling, no popping, no cracking. This product is truly premium and it doesn't feel like a vinyl. Um, I, time and time again, people ask me, you know, does it feel like a vinyl? Does it feel sticker, like a sticker on there? This to me feels more like a water-based ink than anything. It is so soft and so lightweight. And that's what you need whenever you are doing these types of fabrics because you need that breathability. Okay, next we are going to get into some special effects. The first application that we're going to do with that is lock and we are going to press a hoodie. And this is a suede fleece hoodie. I actually like to call it the inside out hoodie because typically what's on the inside is on the outside. Um, and I absolutely love it. It's from Bella Canvas. It is from their street fleece line. And you can see on the inside, that's typically what you would see on the outside. So I call it the inside out hoodie, but it is their suede fleece hoodie. And it is a really cool take. And I think that it's gonna be really popular. So if you guys haven't started working with this yet, it's definitely one to consider. And for this, I'm going to utilize my heat printing pillow. So I'm just gonna insert that and isolate my print area so that that pocket at the bottom is not going to get in the way of an even pressure. All right, I'm gonna dial back my pressure a bit since that pillow is in there. So anytime you do work with those accessories, you wanna make sure that you are dialing back the pressure because it, we're adding a lot of thickness under there. All right, we're going to place the soft flock. Flock is a really great heat transfer vinyl. I love pairing it with fleece styles because I think that they pair beautifully. All right, any questions, Liz? Yes, there's a few coming in. So awesome. one is from Robert. He has an A to Z. He's asking, how can I make sure my shirts are straight on the platen? Okay, awesome. I will show you here shortly. All right, so soft lock is a hot peel. Ooh, that one, that piece didn't apply. We'll see why here. All right, so for some reason, one piece didn't apply. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna attack it a little bit longer, just to make sure that that one piece sits down. So one of the best practices um, that I recommend when getting started so that you can make sure your garment is on there straight is threading and dressing the bottom platen. Um, that really helps to see you know, how the garment would be worn. So consider the platen as your mannequin, essentially. You're putting the garment on there, you're paying close attention to where the collar is lining up. Is it center of the platen? If so, perfect. You wanna see where the edges of the platen are meeting the collars. And once it's dressed on there, obviously you need to get the seams out of the way. So you're gonna pull the seams off 
So that'll help you find your center point. Um, other than that, it really just comes with practice um, and just using all those different tips and tricks with the products, um, just kind of knowing, you know, where my left chest goes and things like that. All right, so that is soft block, has a really nice suede finish to it. Uh, absolutely beautiful on the suede hoodie from Bella Canvas. All right, and last but not least, we are going to do a unique placement on a bag. And this is a duffel bag from SNS Activewear. And the brand is in here somewhere. I can't remember. All right. I think it's AL Style, if I'm remembering that brand correctly. Uh, but they do a lot of pattern duffel bags that I absolutely love. Um, and I don't know why more people aren't printing these for like gyms or people that are, are yoga and things like that. All right. So we are going to utilize the reflective. Uh, transfer from the stalls marketing kit for this and do a unique print location for that. And with that, I am going to interchange my cotton so that I can isolate that print area. Any other questions, Liz? Yes. Um, let me scroll. Tips for avoiding scorch marks on sensitive fabrics. Um, Willie is specifying 100% poly. Yeah, so um, definitely, there we go. <laughs> that was a struggle for a minute. Um, so definitely utilizing um, the right heat transfers, make sure you're using your low temp products, anything 260 to 280. Um, if you can get your transfer at around 300, even that will help. And then also using the flexible application pad. So this flex pad that I showed um, a little bit earlier during the accessory session section, um, this will help with um, avoiding scorch marks. All right, so we are going to load on our duffel bag and I'm going to print over here instead of your standard like center print. Let's do a unique print location and build unique value that way. All right, so I'm just loading this on for the side and then moving this over, trying to get my print area as flat as possible. While you're centering that, Jenna, for soft flock, is it available to order on a roll to cut in-house? Yes, it is. It is available on rolls. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna need a pillow for this because I'm really close to that seam. So we're going to put this pillow in there. Drop that on the platform first and then do our print. For time's sake, we're gonna do the center print. <laughs> Just know that you can do print, uh, unique print locations, um, you know, with your accessories. That's really the point that I was getting at, guys. All right, so just gonna do the center print so that you guys can see the reflective. I wanted to show you guys reflective because I want you guys to see all of the different print finishes and um, you know opportunity that you guys have with heat transfer vinyl and um, accessories. As we're wrapping up, Liz, are there any other questions? Yes. Um, just to confirm, you're using the six by ten with the A to Z heat press. Correct. Yeah, we make a six by ten specific for the A to Z. All right. Reflective is a hot feel, so I can go ahead and remove that. And. Our reflective print is complete on the back. So ideally, I would have loved this to be over here, but it would have taken a little bit more time for me to get it loaded on there. Okay, so I hit my 15 minute mark. 
All right. Um, so guys, thank you so much for joining. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to comment those in the chat section and we'll be sure to revisit that and make sure you have all of your questions answered. I'll see you guys later.